Simon Cooper, Soxernomics. Dive into the world of a Soxernomics by Simon Cooper, where you'll discover the intricate relationship between soccer, business, and various societal factors. Through an engaging journey, you'll learn why most soccer clubs are not run like traditional businesses and how poor financial management rarely leads to the club's demise. You'll also explore the role of managers and the inflated importance placed on them, as well as the increasingly significant role of data and analytics in soccer. Furthermore, you'll delve into the importance of salaries in determining success, the connections between cities and soccer, and the intriguing link between soccer and suicide rates. Let Soxernomics inform and captivate you as it reveals the various dimensions of the world's most popular sport. The Business of Soccer Although soccer is often criticized for becoming too commercialized, it is nothing compared to other industries. Soccer clubs are not run like businesses, and statistical analysis has shown that pursuing victory rather than profit is more beneficial for them. Most clubs are small, with revenues comparable to a single supermarket. However, poor financial management doesn't matter too much in soccer because relegation to a lower division is an option. This is different from normal business practice, where the quality of products and services must remain excellent to keep consumers loyal. Therefore, while soccer may be bigger than ever before, it is still not a big business in the true sense of the word. The myth of managerial impact. The impact of managers in football is often exaggerated. While their appointments may improve performance in the short term, the reality is that most managers are mediocre and make little difference in the long run. The bounce in performance is merely a statistical regression to the mean, and the credit often given to managers for success may not be well deserved. Transfers made by managers also do not necessarily determine a team's success. Making smarter choices in soccer transfers. Soccer clubs worldwide spent a record breaking $4.71 billion on transfers in 2017, but much of this spending is a waste. The transfer market is filled with superstar players who are overvalued, leading to expensive transactions that offer little return on investment. According to experts, the key to getting transfers right is to rely on data instead of fashion and intuition. Clubs should focus on buying players in their early 20s, as these are high-value players who are 18% cheaper than players aged 25 to 28. While some exceptional teenagers may become world-class players, most do not, and investing in players in their late 20s may make them overpriced and overrated. By focusing on performance data, teams can make smarter choices that offer better value for their money and enhance their chances of success. The Winning Formula Money talks in football, and the correlation between wages and performance is a key factor in determining success. While studies show no strong link between transfer spending and performance, high wages attract high performers, making all the difference in the long run. Leicester's surprising victory in the 2015-2016 English Premier League season is an exception as luck and poor seasons for other teams played a role, but high-spending teams consistently dominate the top of the table. The wages market is efficient, and the better the player, the more they will earn. The power of data in soccer. Data is revolutionizing soccer as clubs collect vast amounts of information and use complex analysis to gain a competitive edge. The use of data to guide tactics and make better decisions has improved the success rate of set pieces and helped Bolton Wanderers to score 45 to 50 percent of their goals in this way. Chelsea and Arsenal have millions of data points covering thousands of matches, and all teams now have data analysts. The challenge is to apply this knowledge effectively to prevent players from making exciting but fruitless attempts on goal. As data becomes more rigorously applied, the game is likely to evolve and improve. The connection between cities, politics, industry, and soccer. This book summary discusses why provincial and industrial cities tend to excel in soccer, rather than the great capitals like London, Paris, Rome, and Moscow. The author explains that totalitarian regimes invest resources in the capital city as the center of power, 
which is why clubs from the capitals tend to dominate leagues. However, after the power of fascist-backed teams from capitals began to wane, provincial and industrial cities began to excel. The reason for this lies in the Industrial Revolution, where migrants who moved to these cities found soccer to be an outlet for belonging. Therefore, clubs in these areas mattered more and grew bigger. Today, the rise of ultra-rich individuals investing in clubs and international superstar owners is causing capitals to once again rise in dominance. However, the best provincial teams like Barcelona and Bayern Munich remain at or near the top of European soccer. Soccer stars, from poverty to world class. Investment in sports infrastructure is vital in improving a country's performance in sports. Despite wealth being an advantage for a country, it does not necessarily guarantee success for individual players. Poor European kids are more likely to become great soccer players because their modest upbringing allows them ample time to practice. This is supported by Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule which states that achieving world-class ability in any field requires extensive practice. Unlike their African or Latin American counterparts, European soccer stars grew up with access to basic necessities like good nutrition and medical care, which contributed to their success on the pitch. Soccer has become a life-changing sport for many players coming from poverty, which we will further explore in the next section. Soccer reduces suicides. Soccer tournaments like the World Cup and the European Cup show a significant reduction in suicides across Europe. According to data analyzed in 12 different countries, when a nation's team is competing in a major tournament, there is a decline in suicides for the entire year, regardless of whether they win or lose. The authors suggest that the shared experience of watching the matches brings people together, creating a bond that saves lives. Further examples from outside soccer show that shared experiences like the morning of a national figure have similar effects. This research is good news for fans of soccer teams, demonstrating that being a part of a larger experience has a positive impact on mental health. Why England struggles in international soccer The myth that too many foreign players are hindering English talent has been debunked. In fact, the Premier League offers a wealth of experience and competition for English players. Additionally, England's struggles could be attributed to the lack of home advantage in international competition, as British players rarely move abroad and have trouble adjusting to playing away from home. However, the data shows that England still has a respectable win percentage and bad luck could be a major factor in their inability to win major tournaments. European Network Dominance Western European countries have been dominating soccer in recent years because of the dense network they have established over time. The ease of transfer of knowledge and quick improvement is evident in the seamless way they have traded ideas and techniques that eventually result in improved gameplay tactics. All the top European countries share the same strategy of having no specialized players but rather having every player resemble a passing midfielder. This approach has won them several World Cups and made them the best in the game so far. However, the future of soccer remains uncertain. The Global Rise of Soccer Soccer has become a global game in the last two decades, with its popularity surging in developing countries like China, India, and Indonesia. As these countries invest in the sport, their potential pool of fans is growing richer, which presents an endless opportunity for growth. Western Europe may not continue its dominance as non-traditional soccer nations are likely to catch up. For instance, China's soccer enthusiast president Xi Jinping aims to host and win the Soccer World Cup by 2050, with $220 billion being invested in sport and soccer now a mandatory subject in schools. In his Soxernomics, Simon Cooper offers readers an enthralling look into the intersection of soccer, business, and society. You now understand that soccer clubs aren't typical businesses, and that the business of soccer is much smaller than one might expect. Cooper sheds light on the often overvalued role of the manager and highlights the impacts of data and analytics on the sport. He also emphasizes the significance of salaries on team success and uncovers the fascinating connections between cities politics, and soccer. Unraveling these insights, 
Cooper weaves together the many dimensions that make soccer the unparalleled global phenomenon it is today.